Staples.com network. Thank you for joining us here for a live edition of the Warchant.com recruiting show. We're going to call it Langston Live. Taking your phone <laughs> calls, taking your YouTube comments underneath Michael. You see the subscribe button, or at least the message to subscribe. It's free. You should do that. What else can they do some uh, to show some support, Michael, before we rock and roll? <laughs> Always hit the like button for us, guys. That helps us promote these things all the time, uh, these big events that we do for uh, we cover extensive stuff. So uh, whether it's football, recruiting, uh, certainly hit that like button for us, and that will help us promote these things. Thank you, Michael. Well done. Thank you, everybody, Thanks. for joining us. Uh, again, we'll be taking your calls, comments here on the YouTube. Michael, uh, you've been back in the pocket after spending some time out in Hawaii. You've been watching Mad Men. There was an episode where he went out to Hawaii. It made me think about you and how amazing that must have been. What have you been trying to get caught up on, Michael? What have uh, what have, what have we not maybe known going on in the recruiting world that maybe don't keep up to day to day, even though you did when you were on vacation? I would say more just uh, one, getting your 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 bearings <laughs> as far yeah. as uh, sleep and all that stuff and, and, and rest. But uh, also recruiting just, uh, you know, stuff with the portal, stuff with, uh, you know, targets when they're visiting and just getting prepared for what is going to be a massive June. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of official visitors for FSU. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, certainly campers that uh, direct uh, as far as, you know, changes things as far as adding more guys and and, and certainly making a move on, on prospects. So I think the summer – uh, in the month of June, especially because there's so many camps, uh, maybe Aslan can pull up the the camp uh, schedule. He can show you on the Norville's camp. Uh, again, I think uh, they have a site for it. Uh, but it's going to be a very busy one. They have a, a elite camp on Jan uh, June 4th here at Doak, and then they're going to have another one. I think uh, on June 6th at uh, I think FIU, if I'm not mistaken. So. I think uh, those two events are kind of the ones I've circled because uh, those are going to be the lead elite coming there. And um, certainly uh, the plan was probably to get some South Florida guys there. And so that's why they're trying that. And then you had the big mega camp, which has already got over 20 something, uh, you know, schools they're going to attend. And that's more to help guys that may, not necessarily FSU targets, but mainly just, you know, high school kids. And it just, helps you build contact within other coaches that could later be on your staff. And it's just a great event that uh, certainly uh, benefits a lot of high school kids and a lot of uh, even coaches uh, to be around other coaches and, you know, and coach these guys up. Uh, I think it's a, a phenomenal event. And uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on. You have the big man camp in June, you have the, you know, individual camps, the quarterback camp. So uh, it's going to be, I'm going to be pretty darn busy in, in the month of June. Uh, it's going to be a lot of stuff going on in the, in that month. All right. Well, you said June's going to be busy, so I guess maybe that will keep some people a little bit chilled out. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the pulse is right now, the fans, but in terms of you know the, the portal right now, maybe not delivering as much as we had hoped in terms of at least news, uh, you know, tidbits to kind of really hang on to. Uh, names maybe will start be trickling in here in the next few hours. Again, they had May 1st was the deadline to – inform your school the school then had about 48 hours to actually go ahead and put your name in the portal right so you know who knows how this all and, works. And, but anyhow uh, i mean just back to the point of in terms of maybe that not producing what what fans want right now just in terms of elite high school recruits are, are those names going to come out in june or is the fact that we don't really hear a lot of names right now is that maybe a, a cause of of concern I don't think it's a cause of concern not hearing it now because I think a lot of guys are going to make their decisions in June. And like I said, there's going to be official visits. There's going to be, you know, guys that you know, come in for, you know, visits and, and uh, both in transfers and, and also, uh, you know, high school kids. And, and that's the thing. I, mean, I was talking to Ira about that today about the portal. It's like, you know, you inform, you can inform somebody by May 1st. Who's to say you didn't inform somebody? So I think there's going to be leniency all the way up to the month of June, in my opinion, with that stuff. There's no way you're going to tell a kid in, in the month of May, like, hey, oh, yeah, you can't get immediate eligibility. NCAA is not going to want to deal with all that waiver crap. So they're, I think they're going to be – I think people just need to <laughs> kind of relax and, and let things play out as far as that goes. It doesn't mean all your players are safe either. It doesn't mean – Guys from FSU might not hit the portal at any time. They could hit it. And I think June is kind of the cutoff for me. Once you hit June, I think you kind of know what guys are going to be there. But I think uh, we need to let the month of May go to its course. All right. Uh, we'll grab a phone call here in a second, but let's start with the YouTube comment from our guy, Pillar Mark, down in Naples. Let's go, he says. Michael, hope you had a great trip to Hawaii. 
What position do you think Florida State will land first from the portal, offensive line or something else? Thank well, you. I think I think the number one want that for them is offensive line. You, you we I mentioned you know early in the week I had to nugget about about certainly around three or four offensive linemen. So I do think offensive line. If I was going to pick and guess, because uh, I don't know, Mark, I'm not going to sit there and pretend like I know which one they're going to get first. But I would say offensive line is going to be the guy place because. That's the one they've circled the most. That's the one they're showing the most attention to. Sure, they're looking at linebackers. They're looking at defensive end. I think re- receiver, uh, even DB, um, as we've seen. Uh, but I think offensive line is which way my money would sit because of how active they are with that position, how many guys that they're at least kicking the tires on or showing interest in or starting to build interest in. So I, I would I would put the you know offensive tackle position or offensive line uh overall just uh that would be the position i would go with mark all right right on without further ado let's jump into the call queue i wonder who we have oh what (laughs) he's not there i'm hurt i'm hurt dog it's all right we got west from the villages in the house he's probably busy watching the softball game gator kirk that is this is my fault i totally forgot there was a softball game going on at seven we probably should have done this at six o'clock but too late for that. Wes Villages, what up, dog? What's up, Aslan? Welcome back, Michael. How are we doing? Oh, we're doing great, man. Uh, I saw the pictures of your daughter, three straight date nights. That's pretty impressive, man. Yeah, I got a fourth one probably lined up this week. So, yeah, <laughs> okay. lucky, lucky me. I'm a there you, there you go. Uh, it's all, there you it's go. All, it's, all, it's all good. I saw your pictures from Hawaii. It uh, looked like a blast. I've never been, so I was a little jealous. Yeah, it's. I would suggest it for anybody. Uh, that was one of the best uh, weeks we've ever had. Uh, we had a phenomenal time. It's. It's easy though when your wife is Hawaiian, uh, so she kind of knows where to go in Honolulu. So uh, I don't really. We don't really need a guide. She kind of knows everything. But it, I, I. I recommend it to anybody if, if it's on your bucket list to go there because it's uh, just a phenomenal experience. Very cool. Very cool. Hey, so I, I think we agree. A lot of the kids that have hit the portal that have left FSU, not a surprise, Fuller maybe a little bit, but two guys that I was really shocked that hadn't, just based on the spring, how spring went in the depth chart, TJ Davis and Sean Bray Jackson both really looked like guys I thought would hit the portal. And so I wanted to ask your opinions on those guys, if you're surprised. And also if they, if they don't, like, let's say there's no waiver after the fact, you can transfer and go to drop down to an FCS school and, and get immediate eligibility. Is that correct? Or if you're a grad transfer, I don't think you need to wait. You can just, you can go if you're a grad transfer. Um, so I think that's the, well, I think you're on the mark, uh, Wes, with the FCS. I think you can do that. Um, we see a lot of kids that go from top, you know, power fives to FCS. So we, we've seen that before. Um, as far as the other question, yeah, I mean, TJ Davis is probably out of that group, probably the biggest surprise because he has been in the program for a while. He's friends with guys that have already left that he's close to, like Curtis Fan. Uh, you know, so he's kind of the one that surprised me that hasn't went in there yet. He was one that I kind of had circle. And then Sean Bray just hasn't moved up yet. But um, like I said, that's, you know, a very young prospect. But I'm with you. I could see you know, why people would, would think that he would go in there. I'm not, like, shocked with him, but, you know, TJ does kind of surprise me that he wasn't in yet. Yeah, there you go. Also, that camp you mentioned, is it going to be is it going to be similar to the Midnight Madness camp from last year or not quite as extravagant, or would you compare it? Do you think it'll be similar? I'd compare it to the July Elite camp that they did. Uh, that kind of – it was kind of last minute they threw together – um, it was kind of a elite camp in July where you had the lead, the lead, uh, yeah. So, so many top prospects there, you know, Sam McCall, Travis Hunter, all these Trevion uh, Williams, all these guys that were top guys that were there. So I, I would compare it to that on um, the ones I mentioned on June 4th and June 6th. I think that's kind of what I'm anticipating. So I think it will be similar to that elite camp. There you go. One last thing to piggyback off Mark's question. I agree with you. I believe the next transfer we get will be offensive lineman. And I'm drawing a blank on his name, but he transferred out of Charlotte. He has ties to Alex Atkins and he's a tackle. Do you, do you know who, who he is off the top of your head? 
Uh, I do. Just give me a second. I know his first name. His first name is Dimitri. Um, <laughs> I just got to find this. I'll pull um, it up. Yeah. yeah. Let, uh, let him pull it yeah. up. Uh, but yes, he's, yeah, he's Dimitri a Emmanuel. I feel like that's a possibility. Yeah, Dimitri Emmanuel. He's a possibility. I I was told like, you know, they're checking, they're doing stuff, they're, they're making sure, see if this guy fits. Obviously, a three year starter at, at Charlotte, and no, there's no surprise that Alex knows him really well. And I think this kid, from what I gathered, if FSU comes calling, there's a high chance they're going to get him. Uh, so it's really just about if FSU is going to push there. Um, I, I do think there there's interest as far as intrigued about what what they like about him. But uh, have they they haven't pushed yet? But if they do push, my money would be all on the table. I think for FSU in, in that one, just because I get the sense from people close to Dimitri that um, FSU would be the preference. Uh, so obviously with Atkins, I think they would be the preference, and I think um, he, he they would have a good chance of of pulling a guy like uh, Dimitri. So right now, I haven't heard that solid push yet, but I do know that if FSU does, you know, I, I have it fully confirmed that if FSU pushes, there's they're going to be tough to beat. Very good. All right, guys, I'll let you uh, go. Hey, Aslan, great job on that video with Corey and Coach Norvell. That was uh, great work. I want to give you props. Uh, you did a great job. And uh, as always, Michael, keep up the great work. Welcome back. And everybody, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, as well as warchant.com, the best in the business. Hit up Zaxby's, order your DeLuna. Make sure you get down to the corner pocket, Barton Grill, the best in Tally. Y'all be good. Go Knowles. That's right. That is right. That's Wes in the villages. Shout out to Wes in the villages. Uh, by, uh, by the way, this, uh, I saw Ralph pop up there. Uh, by the way, Ralph, thank you for everything, man. Um, yeah, I know you had a message on here earlier. Uh, How's it? Yeah. Unbelievable guy, man. Uh, we, we had a, me and Diane had a great time with him. Uh, took us to this incredible steakhouse. People have already seen the prime rib. It's this big, I, I mean, I think we had the whole cow on our plate. <laughs> it was massive. And, uh, we had a blast with Ralph, just getting to know him, just, uh, you know, reasons and being in Hawaii. So, uh, Ralph, we appreciate everything. Thank you so much for the love. We hope you enjoy Diane's hat. Rob tells me he's wearing it every day. A little surprised that Diane uh, got him. So I just want to give a shout out to Ralph and, and thank him for all the great hospitality and all the suggestions to go places in Honolulu. Uh, he really helped us out a lot. He's the man. I keep trying to save these photos and pull them up, but I uh, can't figure it out. I don't know what's going on over here, man. I'm falling apart. <laughs> okay. um, I don't know, this, this guy's got his feelings hurt. Um I, I really want to make fun of the person, but I, I don't think we're allowed to do that. No, uh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, Destin Hill. How about Lewis Ross, who asks it like a normal human being without whining? Okay. <laughs> Destin Hill. Yes. Um, I mentioned this before uh, on the smash. Uh, you know, some people saw that. Some people didn't. But, you know, I mentioned that FSU is, is consistently still checking on him when they have evaluation time to go out on the road. I would imagine that they, they've checked on him again, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the expectation from what I was told from now people close to Destin is that they expect him to be there in the summer. Now, I'm skeptical. I have to see it to believe it because I think he's the, the gray unicorn that everyone keeps waiting on. But um, that's the feeling from both the FSU side and people that are close to Destin that they feel like the expectation that he's going to be here in the summer. I was told June is the time, so we'll see. But uh, I think it's a, that's kind of what I have right now, Lewis, as far as what I'm hearing with Dustin Hill. All right. Hit the thumbs up button, Lewis, if you like that one, huh? How about them apples? How about the Oh, my God! What? Dude, you got to you gotta stop this. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm My sorry. I'm sorry for yelling at you people. I'm surprised Joel you. Is, I'm surprised you didn't say a bad, bad word or something. I mean, okay. let's go! Holy hell! Yeah, that's uh, Joel. Uh, thank you so much, buddy. Uh, it was great seeing you uh, in the spring, man. Uh, had a, had a really good time, and I think you now who know who I was talking about. Uh, Joel knows what I'm talking about, but uh, 
yeah, it's uh, Joel's a great dude. Uh, Joel, I I don't even know what to say to that. Um, I'm very humbled by that. We really appreciate the contribution. Joel, what are you doing, man? I love you, man. I love it. I guess he missed me. Maybe I missed me. I Clearly. guess I missed him. Clearly, I've got a war chant addiction, and I don't think there's a cure. Um, all right, man. That's that's not a bad thing. It's not it's a bad not, thing. A lot of other worse vices out there in the world. Yep. Um, I mean, golly. Uh, I just, like, where do you go from here? We'll go to Eric. Joel Davis is going to sponsor the rest of the hour after we get to Derek's question <laughs> and Eric first. So we'll go to Eric, our guy. Eric's actually at the softball game right now, so shout out to him. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Go Lady Knowles, he says. Lots of emojis in there. Michael, uh, have the Knowles gotten anyone from the portal yet? And how are the prospects looking for 2023 and 2024? Aslan, word up. Big yeah, I, I assume he's... Let's go, Michael. Take that word I assume, I, I would assume he's talking about... Uh, you know, just FSU football or, or basketball. Uh, so far, uh, just the most recent one is Darren Reed that they got in basketball. Uh, leading scorer from uh, UCF, uh, they got him. But besides that, uh, they're just they're active with. I've I've heard around you know ten to twelve guys uh, that they're they're talking with uh, from the portal, at least for football, from what I hear. Uh, everything's going pretty well with with prospects. I know it's been kind of quiet, but. It was expected to be quiet until the summer. That's when decisions are going to be made. That's when more major visits are going to be made. So I think they're doing pretty well. So you, you think a lot of these transfer folk, they're going to want to make visits and do the whole I, – I always thought transfers like had done it before, knew what they wanted, and it was pretty much, you know, hey, what kind of NIL opportunities do you have? And they'll get it done. But you think there's going to be a lot of sort of visits and, and whining and wooing and, and patience needing to uh, be shown by the fans? I don't think so much whining and wooing. I think it's more just when they visit, it's kind of like, I think that's kind of the thing that should shut up your radar. Like, I think it's kind of a formality with the visits. I don't think they're looking for something. It's just, I think they just want to feel comfortable where they're at. It's more, I don't think it's more, you have to do something to impress them. I think they know kind of what, what they like about FSU. They just kind of want to get a feel for the city, you know, the campus. And, and, and as long as everything checks off, which it usually does, Nine out of ten times, almost ninety nine percent of the time, it does. So, I think it's more about that. But yeah, I do think there's going to be some visits. All right, shout out to Eric. Uh, give us updates on the game. I think our own Corey Clark's actually out there right now too for the softball game. So, Florida State taking on Florida. It's on ESPNU actually. If you want to put us side by side, mute them. They can listen to us. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the question, Eric. Uh, let's go to our guy Derek. Shout out to Derek. He gets a little bit of this. Wide receiver from Toledo in the transfer portal. Any interest? I'm trying to uh, find the name. I can't find one right now. Yeah, I don't know. That one doesn't pop in my re register as far as knowing that name off the top of my head. So I don't know. I had to get back with you on that, Derek. I don't know. I guess I've, I haven't heard a lot about a receiver from Toledo yet. So, but I, that, that, it, it, even as that looks very generic, Derek, that's helpful to me because I can check with people that I know that would know, uh, you know, somebody from that market. So I'm going to check on that tonight, or even right after I get off Matt, this. And Matt and, Landers. And, okay. Matt Landers, I think that's the name. Let's see if I can, let's see if he had a, a rival's profile at any point in time. I guess he at one time was at Georgia, apparently, and then ended up, uh, maybe he's friends with uh, Deuce Span. Maybe Deuce Span looked up to him back in the day. Well, they play at the same school, so. I will definitely look into that one. I will, I will take a look at that, Derek, and I will actually address that tonight one way or the other on the board. So thanks for mentioning that, and I will, I will look into him. I do. I have not heard about anything developing there, but I will, I will check on it. Had 20 catches for 514 and five touchdowns this past season with the Rockets. Uh, Toledo bad. actually – Toledo, good program, man. Toledo's, Toledo's solid program. That You know, but he's 6'5", 200 apparently. That that's nice. I mean, his rivals are listed at six three one seventy seven, so maybe not that far fetched to think that he sprouted a couple inches and, and packed on some pounds. But yeah, his uh, his Toledo bio has him listed at six five two hundred. So um, it's interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll check on uh, Matthew. I'll check on that. I'll check on that right after the show. Hey Derek, shout out, man. 
Throw them omegas. Go post your question over on the warchant.com tribal council for the uh, Renegade Express, Derek. We haven't recorded it yet. We're going to record it tomorrow, Corey and I, so uh, get on it, man. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate you. Thank you as well, uh, Eric. Uh, we now resume uh, the benefactor of this program, Joel Davis. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sponsor. We're just going to start sponsoring Joel. Yeah, Seriously. Well. Um, all right. Let's see here. I'll, I'll just start reading the questions out for the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, Bobby Estrada. What about the guys at IMG Academy? Samuel Mpemba, Carnell Tate, Francis Maguoa. Do we have any chance with any of those guys? They are in state. Hope to keep them in state. Now, I think most of their chances with um, guys from IMG are probably 2024 guys. Um, I think probably maybe Jordan Church that's there. Uh, he's originally from Fort Myers. That might be a guy that they go after. I think he's going to visit FSU in June for official visit. So, uh, besides that, I don't. I don't think. Um, I don't think uh, there's any guy that just pops in my head from IMG that's like they're, you know, heavily or, or leaning towards FSU. So uh, I think most of them are 2024. You got guys like Stacy Gage and several other guys that are kind of in that Paul part that they're pretty interested in FSU, but most of them are 2024. <laughs> the last guy they got from IMG. Oh, AJ Duffy went to IMG, right? Yes. Oh, yes. God. So we're gonna have to go back to the the Pope, <laughs> Pope days, our guy. All right, let's take a phone call. Right, we are a calling show. Uh, I think it's our guy. I think I think this is our guy, Kyle in Colorado. It's somebody. No, it's not. I think it's Ralph in Hawaii. Figure it out, Aslan. <laughs> My man, Ralph, is that you? Hello, hi guys. How's it? What is up? What is up, man? Long time no see, huh? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I appreciate those kind words, Michael. You and Diane or Ohana, you're welcome anytime, obviously. And Wes, if you make it out here, buddy, prime rib waiting on you. Uh, quick question, if I may. Um, in the Sunday smash, you had talked about, you know, something out there. You didn't want to give it away. You didn't want to betray your uh, confidant. Uh, but, uh, and I'm not asking for a name right now, but the enter the portal time frame, May 1st, has ended. So I'm not asking for the name, but I'm wondering, has that ship sailed or is that exciting potential news still out there for us? I think it's still out there. Uh, I checked on that last night if they were still active uh, with sources I have with the NIL that I know and did pe you know, sources just within close to the kid. And yeah, I think it's still a possibility. Uh, there's still there's still activity with it. So I would say, yes, it's still out there. And I wouldn't like. I think everyone's putting in that May 1st is like a deadline for sure. But I think it's, I think that, that stuff is, uh, you, you gotta, it's about informing the staff. It's not about putting your name in the portal on May 1st. So I think as long as uh, a kid could come out there and just say, Hey, I'm going to stay at this school. And I think, um, I think it's still, uh, you still wait and see, we're still waiting. We're waiting to see what happens with that. All right. Well, appreciate it. I'm going to uh, hang up and let other folks get in. Uh, hey, thank you, guys. Hey, so wait, much. wait, 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 Ralph. Wait, Ralph. Yeah, I got yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This prime yeah. rib, man, like, do they just do – do you guys just get down differently in Hawaii? I've got the photo <laughs> of the prime rib up on the on the screen right now, and it just – I've never no. seen anything this – describe it. Tell me about this. No, 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 no. No, because there's other places that's not nearly that big. That's why that place is so popular. Because it's like half a dinosaur leg. It is it sure unbelievable is. huge. My, Michael can attest the size, yeah. the mashed potatoes and the green beans was hardly mm -hmm. any because the focus of the plate is that prime rib. And, and when I say it, it's the way they it, prepare it, man, it's just, it's just savory, it's juicy. The on juice sauce they send out, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't do the horseradish. Right, so right. I get them to bring me some of that on juice sauce or however the hell you pronounce no, it. You, yeah, you said you nailed it. It's just good. Man. Man. It's just real good. Uh, all right. Very well. Hey, Ralph, man, we appreciate the heck out of you calling in all the time, man. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I'll i be there August 25th for uh, the opener. So I hope to see you guys at Corner Pocket on the uh, the call-in show Corey and Jeff's going to do on the 26th. Hopefully I can see everybody. Absolutely. By, by, by the way, Ralph, how's the hat? You, you still wearing it? You love it? Dude, I'm I'm working in the garage right now, and I'm wearing. It. I love. It. <laughs> there you go. I'm telling you, I was getting ready to order that very hat. I love it. Well, appreciate it, man. Uh, once again, thanks so much for everything. I mean, 
uh, we had a great time and, and you really made it special for me and Diana. We're going to be back soon. So, uh, you know, I can't wait to see you guys again. Uh, we'll be here. We'll, we'll be here unless we're there. All right. We'll see you guys. Okay. Be, be well, Ralph. Take care. That's Ralph, everybody. He's a real guy. He's a real guy. He's awesome too. Mike can attest to it. That, yeah. Go ahead. Do you have something to say? I was just, I was just going to say that prime rib, as on the picture doesn't really do it justice of how big it is when they drop it down. I feel like I was watching if everyone ever watched the movie, the great outdoors, when they take them out for the big 86, like that's yeah. what I felt like. <laughs> that's what I felt like, you know, when I watched that. So uh, it was massive. And I will say I ate more than anybody on the prime rib. So I ate just about all of it, but it was, it was rough. I believe it was you. awesome. Awesome. All right. Let's see here. Somebody was asking about the portal. I think Timmy. Okay. If it's not going to be offensive line, what else uh, do you think is a need that will be addressed via the portal, Michael? Well, I think I think they could use a, another pass rusher. I think that would be a big deal. I think they have enough strong side defensive ends that that do well, that can do right against the run, get some pass rusher a little bit. I think they could use an experienced uh, pass rusher that could you know get after the quarterback and really. You add a lot. I think the kid from uh, Arizona State has kind of caught my attention. Uh, I think his last name is Loyal. Uh, I think it's Jeremiah Loyal, if I'm not mistaken. But that's a guy that I'm intrigued by. Uh, played at the same school as uh, Johnny Wilson. So that that's a guy. I don't know if F I haven't heard that FSU is going after him yet. But that's a guy that I'm I'm intrigued by because uh, he seems to be able to get after the quarterback. Seems to be a good pass rusher. So I I think. That's the type of guy that I, I think they can need. Obviously, if you add another linebacker, you got Kalen Deloach, you got Tatum Bethune, great combination. But you get a third guy that I think that really would solidify that unit. And that receiver, we don't know about Winston Wright. So I think uh, I'm certainly they're still looking out there to see if there's an option uh, that they could get at receiver. Uh, so those are kind of the positions that I got circled right now. What about Jordan Addison? Are we, do we have any no, shot of him? Or we, are no we, chance not, there. Um I've heard that they tried and it didn't go. It's just, you know, just, it isn't there. Uh, they just, uh, the interest is just, isn't there, but they have tried. Uh, they've already worked on that one. So for those that are wondering if FSU put a push for, they did, they went all in them. Uh, but it just, uh, the interest level is just not there. Well, you know, can't get them all because there's lots of zeros to get some of them. And, yes. And yes. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Bobby Estrada comes back with, uh, or actually Angel, or look at Angel Ortiz. Any junior college offensive line targets? I have not heard any junior college off offensive line targets. Most of them are junior college DBs. Actually, they have one on campus this today. As I as I talk about this, uh, you know, official visitor, uh, JUCO All American, uh, Jordan Wright is there today. I was there at FSU for a little while. Spotted him. Uh, do, do a little picture on the the side. Uh, he's there. Uh, so, but I haven't heard any offensive linemen yet in the JUCO market. I think they feel pretty good about uh, kind of where their high school recruiting's at, and then what they're doing in the portal. That they're really not like I haven't heard anything pushing for a, a JUCO offensive lineman. I think they feel good about those two uh, different avenues, the way they're they're attacking the offensive line. So that's kind of been the main focus is high school and in and, and transfer portal. Look at Jennifer coming in hot. Relax. Jennifer, relax. We're just all trying to have some fun. She's talking about we should be firing guys. Uh, they, well, they, they, they I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if they let him go. I mean, they, I mean, the kids got to make their own decisions and leaving. So, uh, um, and it wasn't like he wasn't playing either. I mean, he was he was flashing some, but you know, sometimes guys want to go other places where they can they can be for sure starters. And and certainly, uh, you know, we know Norvo has these ex interviews with guys and and. You know, they talk and then, you know, it comes to a mutual decision that, hey, it's probably best to, you know, see what else is out there. Gator Kirk's on the line. We're going to make him wait, though, because he's late. Kind of hurt my feelings. <laughs> uh, Timmy, uh, we did talk about linebacker. Uh, Isaiah Land from, a, uh, from, a, from not A, well, I mean, it, technically A, but from FAM. Uh, Isaiah mm -hmm. Land, he was the, the Buck Buchanan winner for Defensive Player of the Year in FCS. Right. Uh, him and Cody Jackson from Oklahoma are those guys options. I think land is a possibility. I know the, the NIL is kind of intrigued by him. Uh, so I think there's good kind of talk with him. Um, 
the first report I got was that he was likely staying at FAMU, but then um, they're heavily still monitoring him. So that tells me it's not a you know a for sure thing that he he does go back there. So I think that's a possibility. I, somebody had asked me about Cody Jackson on the board. I have not heard anything as far as with Cody Jackson yet and FSU. So I haven't heard anything there. I would say if there's a receiver that I'm waiting to see, uh, it was Aaron, Arian Smith, who's at Georgia, but I feel like he's probably going to stay there. Uh, and and I've heard that his NIL is kind of pretty high. Um, so that's probably not likely to happen, even if he entered the portal. But uh, I haven't heard a for sure fire receiver yet uh, besides Atkinson, they, Atkinson that they really went after. But I, I'm continuing to wait for more to hear back on Cody. I, I just haven't heard. I'm not saying that they're not interested or they're not hitting him up. I'm just saying that I haven't heard it yet. Uh, so if I get anything, guys, I'm going to, I'm certainly pop it on that thread. I have official, you know, transfer portal thread going that started uh, right when I got back. So, Anything develops there, I'll, I'll certainly let you guys know. All right, let's let's take the phone call. He's paid his penance. It says ninety nine total calls. This might be the one. I don't know if it means this is the ninety ninth, or if this now means it's the one hundredth call. But he still has by far and away the most ever dial-ins to warchant.com program. And whether it's this show, whether it's wake up, whether it's the post game show with Gene. And Tom, you all know who it is. It's Gator Kirk. It's Mr. 757. What up, Gator Kirk? Good evening, gentlemen. How are you guys doing? Kirk, what's going on? Uh, just just a little late tonight. Did not, didn't see the notice or even get, maybe I got a notification and just missed it. But watching the softball game. So I, I have um I'm not sure if you already covered the the D E the defensive end from FAMU. So if you've covered that. Um, then the other question would be why, why is Mike Norville, why were you still looking at DBs? I thought we were pretty solid there. Well, I mean, you, you lost, um, you obviously you lost Jarvis Brownlee. There's several guys that are a few that already left. Um, so, uh, I think, I think too, that you're always looking to improve your product as far as, uh, we, we seen the secondary look really good. So I think they're always trying to improve their product and, I don't think it's a necessity of a need, but when a guy jumps out to you, um, you know, you got to take it as if, he, if he's a guy that's an elite player or, or viewed elite by, by the staff. So I think you always are looking for back end guys that, that can really uh, change. It changes your defense so much when you have, you know, shut down guys, whether they're a safety or a corner, it just really dramatically changes your t- team. So I don't think they're just searching for one. I think it's just, if there's one that pops up and, fits all their criteria, um, they're certainly going to make sure they go after it, uh, especially with them, uh, you know, losing a few guys. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Hope you had a great vacation. It's time to get back to the grind. Hopefully we'll get some exciting news in the next couple months and maybe some information about the player run workouts this summer. Thanks always taking my call. Make sure you support everything that War Chance supports. Hit that thumbs up. As always, go Knowles. Thank you, Kirk. Night. Hey, Appreciate Gary Kirk, we missed you, man. Hope you're doing well, man. Uh, it's been it's, it's been a rough May so far, so All right, it, man, it can well. only go up from here. So uh, I'll have some tacos you know. and a margarita on, on my behalf tomorrow. I'll Venmo you the money. Let me uh, know. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Y'all have fun. Appreciate it. Go Knowles. There we go, man. So I got Gator Kirk, man. Sometimes brings the juice, you know. Sometimes you know a little bit more chill out. Hope everything's well, thinking- guy. Yeah, we're thinking about you, man. Uh, whatever's going on, we hope you're you're doing well, and uh, we're always here wherever you need. So uh, um, we appreciate you. We just want to make sure you know that. So we appreciate you calling you every week. You know, the stuff you do, the board, uh, you know, post on the board questions. It's always good. And so uh, hope everything's good, man. Uh, to bring levity, this just makes me laugh. Like we got Miami fans just come in here and enter and just say stuff. And it will always be about the you. You guys aren't very good anymore, um, but I mean, I guess it always will be apparently, about you guys somehow. You, you can apparently, you apparently, it hasn't been about the U for like 21 damn years. Uh, so uh, you haven't won anything in as far as a championship. So, oh, luckily, yeah, no, no, and there, no, you don't come in this. In, I can see it coming out of you, man. You, like, you don't, you don't come, me. you don't come in our house and try to and, and try to control stuff. Like win <laughs> something. You lost to FSU last year, so you have no bracking rights at all. You lost yeah. to FSU, so 
No, there's nothing in um, – Win a championship, win a conference championship, and then come talk. That's what I say. I'm just sticking up for my guys, the FSU fans. So, uh, you know, I just I, – I don't understand people coming okay. in there. And I don't understand people coming in a, a FSU chat to talk about Miami. <laughs> <laughs> There's new king, and the new king shows that they got. They're they're flanking us from both positions. Like, hey, dog, what you you doing anything today worthwhile? Nah, man. Hey, let's go on the war chat chat and let's try to have some. Uh... Hey, hey, new All king, right. what was the last? What was the score last year? It's yeah, what awesome. was the, who who won last year? We yeah, tell me, you guys joining yeah. us. Thank uh, thanks for uh, thanks for letting us know that we live in your head twenty four hours a day. Thanks for dropping by. Appreciate uh, it. <laughs> Bob Estrada is asking you, Michael, just uh, how important or how much does it come up in your conversations with recruits? How much of an impact has NIL been on the kids when you do talk to them? He knows it plays a factor, but will it make the almighty dollar rule? Uh, will that rule over the love of a school? I mean, Bob it's it's a major factor. I mean, there's no getting around it. It, it does uh, in different ways. Uh, I think. Like some guys, a few guys, it's more important. Uh, it's number one, but it, it's the factor. It's one of the major factors into a recruitment. So it's something that you have to be competitive with. Uh, certainly, uh, while the news was, you know, stunning uh, the way the shift and the and Mary Smims things went, but I was also very confident of where things are going forward about what FSU does in the NL because of you know what I was hearing uh, of how that thing was going. Uh, so. I think FSU's made big strides as far as what they're doing, and and it's a big part of recruiting. So you have to be, you have to be some sort of competitive. Now relationships and fit and all that stuff is is going to be a big deal. But you know, you take care of NIL, Aslan, you win on the field. So if you win on the field, your NIL is going to take care of itself. So that's the major factor for FSU is they need to win. <laughs> You guys lost, man. Malcolm, you lost. Our, my feelings are intact. I'm good, man. I'm really good. And he's like, put money on this year's game. It's in Miami. You guys have a pretty good chance to win the game, but we're not going around saying it's all about the spear all the time. We, we might have said <laughs> the last 20 years, but we've won some things of significance. Here, here's, the, here's the, the uh, way I look at it. No, no I'm not going to address those guys, but here's the way I look at it. It's like when your team loses, you don't talk. You don't talk. <laughs> When your team loses, you don't talk. Apparently, Utah wasn't scared of Mario since he beat him twice in a row and, and killed him. Uh, so, but yeah, it's it's this is silliness. This is what you deal with with unfortunately with with some fans, not all fans, because I have some good friends that are Miami fans. But unfortunately, you get some people like this that um, FSU's obsessively in their head twenty four hours a day. Right, it's just way to this. Um, Jalen Davis, 24. Is that a guy? Somebody in class 24, Jaden Davis. Jaden Davis, yeah, quarterback. Yeah. With Jayden Davis. yeah, quarterback. Uh, FSU's in his top three. He's going to officially visit FSU. I'm pretty confident about that. I think, uh, they're right in there. I think he's visited FSU twice in the spring. They did a really good job uh, both times. He's really close with Tony Tokarts, the quarterback's coach. He really likes Norvell a lot. And, and he's not a kid that's influenced by, um, <clears throat> I don't think NIL is like the driving factor for him, although it probably will be a big factor later on. As we see with quarterbacks, seems to be those are the, the most expensive guys that get the biggest deals of quarterbacks. So I think they're definitely in the, in the top three and, and done a good job. I don't think, uh, I don't, I wouldn't call him the leader, but I think they're certainly a major factor for Jaden. Um, what about Cam Davis? Uh, yeah, he's a 2024 commitment um, to FSU. He's, um, I think he's he's pretty strong in that in that pledge. Uh, I have I haven't heard anything different to make me change my mind. I think Alabama, Georgia, are still pushing after him, but I feel I feel good about Cam. I think it looks pretty good for where FSU sits right now. Wow, really? A kid from Albany? Like I don't know. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get you back here. And then it's your show. Okay. Uh, a kid from <laughs> Albany is going to say no to Kirby Smart to come down. Again, I'm just being realistic, everybody. Just being realistic. I, I understand that feeling, but this is it's a yeah. little bit different. This kid's a little bit different because, I mean, when I say he's a diehard, he's a really well, big so guy. Was Travis Hunter. So was Travis Hunter, man. Yeah, you know, Travis was a diehard of Dion. He wasn't a diehard of FSU. Um, Derwin James are guys that I feel are diehards. Like Derwin, right. 
never wavered. Uh, but Cam's kind of in that same boat where I'm not saying that he's an automatic guarantee that he'll sign with FSU, but he's kind of in that mold of, of the way Derwin is, what's about FSU that um, I think it would take uh, some coaching staff shakeup for FSU to lose out based on kind of the things I'm getting w- with Cam. And, and it, you always follow to, you got to, the visits are a big part of it. And his visits uh, pattern to FSU is, is extremely high. Uh, even when he went to Georgia and Alabama, he came right back to FSU. So as long as those visits keep happening, I'm not really that concerned with Kim. All right, let's keep it rolling here. Um, Timmy's back. All right. Just heard that beat. That's just Timmy talking. Where does Florida State stand with Desmond Ricks? Is he related yeah. to Eli Ricks? Not that I've heard. Um, Not that I've heard. Uh, I think it's still FSU and Alabama. I still feel FSU has done the best job with Desmond Ricks. I think 2024 is still a long ways away, but I think uh, everything seems to be clicking. Really likes Woodson a lot. Really high on him. And I mean, said FSU stands out the last time we talked to him. And I still feel FSU is the team that has done the best job, even though Alabama is pushing hard. I think, you know, he's a guy that I think is just – you know, it's just certain things are different. Uh, he's not like your usual five star that's so enamored by Alabama. I think he's a guy that he wants to be a part of something that's that's trending up, mm-hmm. and uh, you kind of sense that when you talk to him. But certainly, Alabama is going to be there, and it's going to be a recruitment that goes on for a while uh, for 2024. He's already mentioned he's going to take officials. So, um, but I think FSU's done the best job so far. A lot of 24 talk. Give me, like, who do we need to know about in 2023, Michael? Like, not some, no one that's committed already. I don't want to take those guys for granted. Randy Pittman, shout out. Uh, Lamont Green, shout out. Uh, Chris Parsons, shout out. I mean, who are some of the guys that are maybe like an urgent kind of alert to be kind of keeping an eye on in, in terms of like that mutual interest between them and Florida State? I think defensive tackle Jordan Hall's one. I'll go one defense, one offense. For me, Jordan Hall. FSU offered him first. Uh, Odell worked him out at a camp uh, last year in, I think, June or July. They just, ever since then, it's just the relationship has been, you know, off the charts. And then uh, on the offensive side for me is a new visitor uh, is Sam Singleton out of Jacksonville, Florida, four-star running back. I think FSU, uh, he's he's officially visiting FSU. By the way, I do need to update his profile that he's officially visiting FSU in June. That's the only official he has set so far. So it tells me who's on his mind. And I think that's one that kind of circle, uh, I think, uh, really great speed. FSU loves speedy back and Singleton, you know, fits that mold. So those are two guys just off the top of my head that really just jump out to me, you know, one on offense and one on defense. So uh, those are kind of two I'm watching right now. Mm. Mm. All right. That's what I wanted to know. Yep. Try to get something ready for these Miami fans, but uh, I got to get loaded up here. Bobby Estrada's back. Hakeem Williams. I remember that name. What's yeah. up with our guy, Hakeem? Hakeem is very all over the place just because there's a lot of schools that are actively with him. A lot of big schools are with him. I think FSU is very much in the mix. But when you're dealing with Georgia and Texas A&M, right. that's tough. Uh, that's tough. And so I think FSU is probably behind those teams. But besides that, I think FSU is probably in top three up there. But I think um, – Certainly, a good season will certainly have a strong impact, I think, on a guy like Hakeem, where he wants to see what these guys are going to look like on the field. And we know, here's the thing, receivers for FSU just you know, weren't great last year. Uh, you know, the passing offense in general wasn't that great. So he probably wants to see kind of a, you know, I think a lot of receivers want to see what this passing game is going to look like uh, during the season when all these new additions with you know, Michael Pittman, Johnny Wilson, Deuce Fan, all these guys that are new. And two, what, how development with Malik McClain and how that's going up, I think they want to see what they're about. I need to go. I, we need to, when we do our spring tour, like we need to go hang out in Miami. I need to like actually be around Miami fans to get like, because I'm just laughing. Everything they post right now, I'm just laughing. It, it really, I find it humorous. It's beautiful. It's amazing. What what do we know about uh, Adam Hopkins? Is that a person of interest, Timmy? Yeah, Timmy's providing content. I think Timmy, I think Timmy might get information having his own blog. 
but uh, we <laughs> there you go. keep them coming, man. Keep them coming. Yeah, early on, FSU was the leader, uh, but then he he visited FSU like eight or nine times, and I'm like, why is this kid? He kept saying FSU's number one, and he's a leader, but he never commit, which is always kind of a you know small red flag for me. And then uh, I visited Texas A&M, and and now I think he's probably going to go to Texas A&M from what I hear. Um, so Texas A&M is where I lean on that one with Adam. But, um, yeah, hey, Texas A&M is playing well. I understand that. They're a proven product. Uh, so I would also watch out for Georgia, too. Uh, I, I could see Georgia getting involved there. His good, his good buddy and former FSU commit, and now Georgia commit, um, Gabriel Harris is there, uh, committed oh, to Georgia. Harris yeah. committed to Georgia? Yeah. Yeah, so Harris committed to Georgia, so that's kind of – that's a team I'd watch. You know, they, maybe they push, maybe they don't, but uh, I think that's that's one to watch. Man, they were on him. Didn't he commit like two years ago to Florida State? I remember, yeah. like, like, oh, 20, we got a video as long as 2023. I'm like, it's – I don't even think COVID was around by by that time, man. Incredible. Uh, well – Shockingly, right. shockingly we – Shockingly, we didn't do a tour there, so it's shockingly. They usually yeah. wait till we do a tour, and then they commit somewhere. Uh, Matty Ice, Matty Sims, Matthew Sims, is it safe to say, in your opinion, Michael, that defensive line is the biggest need for the next recruiting? Are we t- is that 2024, the next recruiting cycle? Or are we talking about this? He says next recruiting cycle. So. I think you might be talking about this cycle right here, uh, If I, I'd guess. But either way, yeah, it's a big need, uh, Matt. Uh, I think it's a big deal as far as – you know, adding two or three guys in the trenches, obviously adding some key uh, pass rushers. They do have some young, really good talent that I'm excited about, like Patrick Payton. I think he's going to be a good one. Um, but uh, they do need better pass rushers, better uh, guys in the trenches. And you want to keep filling that up. They did a really good job building that up with, you know, transfers and just guys emerging. So you want to keep that going, uh, you know, certainly with the trenches. So, yeah, I do think the defensive line is going to be the focus. All right. Uh, <laughs> great. Um, all right. Um, it's just, it's just, this is amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's full, uh, professional wrestling breaking out right now in, the, in right. The, the comments. It's an amazing thing here. Awesome. Um, all right. We've asked about Hakeem. All right. People talking about this. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Derwin. You mentioned him obviously being a, a guy that never wavered our guy. Yeah. Uh, Gator Kirk points out the fact that he had the tattoo. That was mm-hmm. that was solid. That was solid, uh, Michael. Where are we going to be going for for the the spring tour? I know you haven't quite mapped it out fully, but when you think about where we've got to go as as a guy who covers recruiting, when it comes to this this cycle right now, twenty twenty three, guys here in the southeast, where where mm-hmm. do you think is going to be one of the, the the cities that we're going to have to go to to catch up with some of these schools? And what schools are there? Well, I think definitely we're going to go to Jacksonville. I think I've already mentioned a few guys that are in there. Uh, uh, I think Jacksonville is an area. I think Central Florida and Tampa is another area that we can. We're going to hit up some guys. A little oh. bit. I'll, I'll stop on my own, probably in Southwest Florida, to hit up some places there. I think there's some good schools there in Fort Myers and Naples. <laughs> and then, of course, we'll go to uh, you know Miami and check out and say hello to you guys. Um, maybe some Miami fans will come in there. We can figure out where their brains are at of why uh, every year, every off season, they're the national champs. Yeah, so uh, we'll figure out what, where their mindset is. So maybe we'll run into some Miami fans over there. So that's kind of some places that I kind of got circled to what we're going to do. I know he mentioned in the phone call and you addressed it, but are you a little bit surprised that they're spending time going after junior college defensive back? I know they're not flush with all Americans back there. They had an all conference guy in Jamie Robinson. I think we all like Amarian. I think we like how Akeem looked this spring. So did the staff. Kevin Knowles is a yeah. guy that you know maybe can grow up and 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 be totally on the outside, not play slot. I don't not not saying like grow up like uh, he's immature and yeah. just you know develop yeah. and grow into that role, if you will. It, it just seems and listen, everybody. I, I know there's a sort of like fallacy that we think if they're going after defensive back, that means they're not going after an offensive lineman. They can they can do all that. They can juggle all these balls at the same time. But I don't know. I, I was a little bit surprised when I saw like a JUCO target was on campus and was defensive back. I mean, yeah. I, did you get an explanation yeah. that might sound a little bit better than what I just rambled about? No, I think your 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 comments were were on par. Uh, I think. Um, yeah, I was. I'm mildly surprised that yeah you know, they're going after. But as I pointed out, I don't think they're really going after a DB more. And if a guy pops in your lap, and it can help your secondary, I just think they're gonna 
they're going to jump on it and, and see what's out there. Like I said, Jarvis Brownlee went to Louisville. Um, Hunter Washington left. Uh, I think uh, maybe there's one other guy I felt, I felt like, you know, a few guys that were down the depth chart had left. But um, you got a chance to – I don't think they're necessarily searching for a DB. I think it's more – if a guy is elite and he falls into their lap, I think they're going to pursue. Uh, and that's kind of what they're going through. I don't think it's like, oh, it's up there with offensive line and defensive end uh, to me. I think it's more just if this pops in their radar, you know, they're going to, and if it's their, what they want, they're going to go after. Now, I agree with you. You're not wrong, Aslan, that you, the one group that you feel good about watching the spring game was that DB group. Like they looked really good. Um, so they they look pretty strong in that area, but you know, uh, I guess I guess their thinking is, hey, if we can make it better, we're going to jump. It is it is twenty twenty two, man. There's there's a lot of good quarterbacks in this conference, so I guess you can never have uh, too many of them. Uh, we got a question about hoops. Shout out to Matthew Sims. I'm I'm assuming hoops asking about is that Ivy League transfer kid any good? I assume that would be uh, I think Jalen Ganey. Yes, who came from Brown. Two-time defensive player of the year, um, and uh, I think shot over, I want to say, 60% uh, from the field. He's even set a record in the Ivy League. Uh, obviously, uh, he finishes at the rim really well. A guy that is defensively is a big problem. for. I mean, he adds a lot to that team. And then, uh, you know, you can add one more in, in there, one or two more, which I think they're not probably done. I think he, that he would mesh with them really well. But two-time defensive player of the year. That's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good thing you're looking for in 61 from the 61 percent from the field. So yes, he's a he's a no, major. Bro, he was 70. He was 70 percent from the field, Michael. This kid's incredible. Okay. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy's a really strong addition, uh, along with the kid they got from UCF, who I mentioned earlier. I think this is a, a great uh, addition. Certainly, his free throw shooting could get better, but um, besides that, uh, I think he. Like he he blocks shots. He he certainly uh, defends on ball really well, and I think he's going to add a lot to that team. And he's a he's a really big addition that they were they they desperately want as far as on the defensive side. Because when Leonard's defensive teams are when teams are good defensively, that team seems to kind of find their own mold and find their own uh, grill as far as uh, offensive side of the ball. So I think it was a a really big addition. I love both of the additions they've gotten so far with Darren. And uh, uh, Ganey, I think they're both tremendous additions. All right, back to ba- back to football. Uh, Michael he- he Jackson uh, seems like there's a pipeliner, at least a great connection with Edna Carr High School in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Are there any top prospects coming from there or the New Orleans area with mutual interest? Yeah, I think he asked that on the board too. So no. I answered on the board. Uh, did I answer on the board, or I, I got it still edited? I might have still edited. Uh, yeah, I haven't posted it yet, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's the question I was talking. I was telling you as long as I was looking up, but uh, I think there's more kids, and you know, from the St. Augustine area, uh, St. Augustine High School in New Orleans. I think the guy that jumped out to me is Ky- Kyran uh, Borda. He's a defensive tackle that they're heavily involved with. He's in their top group uh, finalists of list. He's going to visit FSU in the summer. This is one of those summer visits I keep referencing uh so he's a guy that's going to visit the summer he has ties to um certainly david johnson and uh i think he already um he's close with um you know guys like byron turner who's there who i'm very high on who i think could take a a big step this year but um i think Kyron would be the main guy but there's there's after like four or five guys that they've built uh it isn't so much edna Carr uh more than it is just saint augustine and you know some other uh you know, new name schools to FSU fans, but they are very strong in their presence in, in the state of Louisiana, including FSU pushing really hard for five-star wide receiver Shelton Sampson. I'm sure Aslan can pull that one up. He is a big-time uh, prospect. FSU's in his top three, and he is serious about FSU. Um, <clears throat> I want to say um, his coach now is at FSU. Uh, his former high school coach is now at FSU. Uh and Gabe, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, so there's a lot of connections along with Johnson, and 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 he's serious about FSU. He really liked that that first visit, really knocked his socks off. So I think um, certainly LSU is never easy to beat. So certainly that will be a tough battle, but they are very much in the mix. All right, 
I like it. I like it. Uh, Timmy's back to get more information for his blog. Uh, Timmyblog.blogspot.com. <laughs> Jonah Miller uh, transfer. Are they looking at him? Yes, that's the kid from Oregon. I mentioned him uh, my first day back uh, from Hawaii. That he was a guy that I'd heard there was some, you know, solid interest as far as FSU. They're very intrigued by him. Um, <clears throat> am I saying that they're fully pushing? No, but I'm saying they're 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 very intrigued by this guy. So um, connections are probably with Derek Ray, from what I hear. Uh, I think he has connections with the kid. Um, so, um, but I think that's the guy that certainly uh they're intrigued by that's the best way i can put it right now i don't hear a full push or i mentioned that but he is a guy that they certainly uh have shown um intrigued of malcolm stop using all caps bud you can just you can just type regularly timmy's got another question michael okay have they hired someone to take kenyatta watson's spot no they haven't uh they're still you know looking for that that guy uh those are a few guys that I think they're in the finals that they felt like they were close to getting, but I have not heard their name. I'm not going to say their name because I don't want to put FSU in an uncomfortable place, but they're very good. Um, I think they would be a very good fit, but so far we have not heard a replacement yet with their. All right, Malcolm, shout out. Real recognizing real. Real recognizing All real. Caps, Bobby huh? has got a question about uh, the mega camp. Um is it going to benefit the program? How so? Having 22 programs present, any big names supposed to be there? It's more of a thing, and I talked to Ira about this, Say it's more of a thing for Ira, Corey, and Gene than it is me. There's not like a lot of – now, there's a lot of prospects. You know, maybe this year will be different, but it's like last year it was more – there might have been three or four that, that are guys that there were targets for FSU, but – it benefits your program because you're giving more high school look, uh, horse high school players look, even if they're not FSU quality, you're giving attention to that. That's going to attract families. That's going to attract families to other people to talk about FSU. And it's also gives you a chance to see uh, other coaches work and in hobnob and get to know the guys that could be on your staff. So it's, it's extremely beneficial for your program because you're doing stuff for high school. I mean, it takes away from what the, People, all people think like, oh, this is such a selfish uh, move when you're doing everything. You're all about your school where this is a very unselfish move where you're you're trying to help kids that probably aren't going to end up at your school. And that has a dramatic effect on on word spreading of, of the way you do things and how how you're viewed upon parents and, and high school coaches. And that's a big deal. Uh, it's a big deal. And and like I said, too, you don't know what coaches could be there that could eventually later on be in your staff. So it's a good chance to be around these guys and kind of see what they're like and see what they do. I, I That was such a blur that day. Was it a weekend? Was it a day? Yeah. I don't, it was, it was, it was far. a day. It was one day. Was there anybody that they're involved with now? That's like high end, like rivals One Hundred and Fifty. that was at that camp that we remember the one kid that I remember Francis Knowlton. Uh, he's a defensive end. He was there, and there was a couple of young kids that they were kind of interested in. They're intrigued by that I noticed, but Francis Dalton was the only one of that class that I was like, okay, that's a guy I know uh, that was there. But besides that, uh, you know, it was a few guys, but most of them were just guys that they were intrigued by, and there weren't like major, major targets. And um, so, like I said, it's more of a team thing than it is a recruiting thing. I thought, I think a lot of people see mega camp and they're like, Oh, that's a big recruiting thing. It's more team stuff. It's more team related than it is recruiting. How it's a recruiting camp, Michael. It's a, it's, it's prospects there, man. It's not, yeah, like but, it's, it yeah, but you're, thing, you're, uh, you're evaluating drills. Yeah. But you're evaluating coaches. You're helping kids that aren't even going to be at your school. More well, exactly. than like the whole thing. It's like, so that answers the question, man, like th this, it's not. It's it's public relations more than it is actual yeah. football nuts. But it doesn't. Things. It's not more of me and as far as right. the stuff I'm doing because a lot of these guys, you know, uh, I help a lot of guys. You know, if they have questions or whatever way I can help them that aren't going to FSU. So in that way, I it does help. But I'm just saying, as far as me and FSU, not really big. 
Uh, our guy Derek is back. XDQ004. That's his handle on the wordchant.com travel council. He's a uh, valued member. Any interest in Christian Williams, defensive line transfer from Oregon, who originally was from Memphis? Yeah, I have not heard anything with Christian yet. Um, that's another one. And guys, I appreciate when you throw these names out because it helps me where I can check with my guys. Um, you know, the guy mentioned Landers earlier at receiver and then now Christian Williams. I will check on these guys. I have not heard anything with Christian, who's very similar looking to Trey Benson, by the way. Uh, but uh, I will I will check on that. I, he's not one I've heard. Uh, so I will look around. I will, I will see what I can find out. All right. Last one. Uh, I want I was trying to think of something funny to say for the Miami folk, but I won't. Aaron Willis, linebacker. Marcus Lee likes him. Do we know who, who Aaron Willis is? Maybe he's related to uh, my, my guy, Patrick Willis. That'd be nice. Maybe he's related to Jer- Jerron Willis that, that ended up at Georgia Tech. I don't know. Oh, too uh, soon. Too soon, Michael. Too soon. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know that name. Off the, he's not on my hot board, so that's not one I know uh, off the top of my head. I will. I will check and see what I can find on Aaron Wills, but that's not one I know off the top of my head. Yeah, it looks like he's at Tennessee already. I'm not sure well, if he's in the portal or not. I don't okay, know. I'll have to see if he's in the portal. Like I said, I love these names, guys. I love when you throw me names out, so I will check on Aaron Wills as well. Um, I'm assuming that he's in the portal or possibly about to go in the portal, um, but uh, I will see what I can find out there. More names. Write these down, Michael. Write these down. Uh, Derek's back. Marcus Washington. Yeah, I haven't heard anything there. Uh, the but uh, I I've got a pretty good uh, memory, but I I will also ask about that one. I've got all these names registered in my head. Once I get it in, Jalen Brown, the receiver. Yeah. Jalen Brown. Jalen's one of the guys me and Aslan are going to go see um, out of Gulliver Prep, same school as Lamont Green Jr. He's committed to FSU. Um, so, uh, I think FSU is in the top three. Um, I think, uh, certainly, uh, he's a guy, they feel they've done a good job with the relationship, but at the same time, you know, they've worked to do as far as just, you know, finishing products, showing what they want on the field, showing that receiver position, you know, making that receiver position more sellable, uh, as far as, uh, the program goes. Man, Bobby said goodbye, but then he came back. He's got a guy from Iowa, from Pleasant Hill, Iowa, Caden Proctor. Yeah, nothing there. That's uh, I think that right. kid's a high school kid, and he's not really considering FSU. All right, we'll go out on this one. This is a good question. It's from our guy, Kevin. Okay. What are the odds that Destin Hill enters the transfer portal? Would he be the first imaginary person to start an NIL? <laughs> bidding? Uh, probably not high, I would say, since FSU's feeling that he's going to be here. So... And I think he's very well connected to to David Johnson. So I would say I, I'm not going to give odds, but I'd say the odds are pretty strong that if he ends up somewhere, it's going to be FSU. Now, well, I'm skeptical until I see his face on campus. And yes, I have met him, as I told Jeff Cameron and Aslan on the Sunday Smash. I have met him several times for visits uh, when he's here. So he is a real person. Um, but um I'll be skeptical until I see him on campus, but if he's going to end up at a campus, I, I definitely expect it to be FSU. We should do trench talk with him, but like <laughs> film him. Like he's like an FBI informant to where like you can't see his face and like, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll alter his voice, but we, we, we promise it's Dustin Hill. And then you guys will see him catching touchdowns. Hopefully, left and right, left and right. We'll see how it all goes. All right, what's going on and cooking over at the PRB in the meantime, Michael, now that we're signing off? Still tracking, uh, obviously, all the transfer news. I'm going to check on some more guys, maybe have another update probably tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We've already mentioned that, you know, there's official visitor on campus, Jordan Wright. Um, he's visiting a DB uh, Juco out of uh, Fullerton, California, if I'm not mistaken. So he's... We're going to follow up with him probably tomorrow. Um, I would imagine that business is going to end at late in the afternoon or you know, early Friday. So we work on that stuff. And then um, we'll continue to, me and Austin will continue to get up with these prospects at the FSU coaches visit. So we'll catch up with them. And and uh, that's kind of what's going on. Appreciate the Canes fans stopping by. Why don't you pop in the FSU game from last year? You can see the fourth and 14 again and and see what you think about that. But uh, thanks for dropping by, guys. We appreciate it.
Oh man, I wish you I wish you would have teed me up. I wish you know that was coming. I would be able to pull it up. We've got the rights. We should we actually have the rights to be able to play that play. Pop pop it up. Yeah. I got oh, time. I, I got nothing but time. Yeah. Um oh, it was, that's two oh, that's a two point conversion. That was a two point conversion that, that made it a field goal to where you guys still had a chance, but you guys forgot how the rules worked. <laughs> and you you didn't you didn't snap the ball in time. Uh, but it's all right, you know. Get them next year. You guys can get them next year. Now, let's relive this one together, right? Man, yep. can you fourth and I mean, just might as well start heading to the exits. Game's over. The game's, game's over. over, right? I mean, Jordan Travis isn't a good quarterback. Ah, we got a better quarterback. Oh, whoops. whoops. Whoa, Oopsies. what's going on? Whoopsies. Yeah, yeah, that guy. That guy caught that pass on you oh, guys. The, and by the way, he's he's from South Florida. So the yeah. guy that caught the caught the pass is from South Florida. That's that's fun. That's fun. He's Michael. I'm Aslan. <laughs> thanks to Joel Davis. You the man. Thanks to Eric no. Angel. Uh, thanks to our guy, Derek. Uh, thank you, everybody, for posting your comments and uh, tuning in. We do appreciate it. He's Michael. I'm Aslan. Thanks again. Have a great one. Take care.